Hi, this is Dr. Donald Fox, orthodontist in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Sorry to come to you under these circumstances we're having with the coronavirus. Let me introduce myself real quick. Um, I am a World Research Award winner with the American Association of Orthodontists in 1987, where I studied Tylenol, acetaminophen, and paracetaminophen, um, possibly causing birth defects from low dosages from women who took uh, and have taken acetaminophen on the 13th day of pregnancy. Um, they don't even know they were pregnant. Also, I've done a um, study where liver damage from the flu while with acetaminophen and also while drinking alcohol or the next day um, from trying to avoid hangovers. I'm also the inventor of the Light Cure permanent retainer that's used on braces that everyone in the world uses. And uh, also I've done research at the University of Richmond on repairing DNA and RNA with the ultraviolet light. And this also applies to the viruses that the virus, but it takes a lot of time and a special wavelength. Um, not too keen on that one yet. Um, also done other research um, at the Medical College of Virginia on uh, lip numbness after wisdom teeth or having jaw surgeries or car accidents to the jaw. I graduated number one in my dental class in Richmond, Virginia at Medical College of Virginia. And then I went to the University of Tennessee um, where I did my research in, in the acetaminophen Tylenol. And right now I'm in current in private practice and with um, Invisalign early cases with teenagers and adult braces and children. I, my biggest specialty is helping jaws to grow and little patients at age six where their faces aren't growing correctly. I have offices from Boca Raton down to Miami Beach, 10 offices. My website is www.reallystraightwhiteteeth and at that you will see videos about some of the things I'm talking about, especially on how to brush, floss, water pick. Let's jump to what the problem is now. I keep seeing in the past three weeks about people educating us on TV and on the internet about not touching our face and getting the virus in our mouth, nose, and eyes, touching things, we're cleaning things. Uh, the timeline of the exposure is really uh, needs to be made clear to the public right now, is that once this gets to your mouth, three to four days later, the virus is multiplying and growing. It's growing itself. Um, it splits and it makes another one, and you have hundreds of these in your mouth, and then Four days later, it goes to your throat, and this has um, been shown that 80 to 90% of the way the virus gets to your lungs is this way. It doesn't just jump right into the air, into your lungs. 10% we believe it does, but 80 to 9% of the cases, um, that is what we're seeing. There's even a guy on Fox News last night on March 28th, and he basically is a, a surgeon or uh, emergency room physicians stating that we've got to stop touching our face. But the problem is no one's addressing once it's in the mouth and throat and knows how to get rid of it. So anyway, um, if it makes it to day five, that's when you get the sore throat. And if you may not get a sore throat, but then from day six, it goes to your lungs. Day 10, you're at the hospital. So we want to stop this once and get it out of your mouth. And I believe there's some making it into the mouth and then somehow we eat, drink, brush our teeth and stuff. But what I'm going to show you is how to effectively get it all out. And um, no one's addressing this. So once you um, get this, you also should realize that the particles that we are coming in contact with, this was on a webinar from the American Association of Orthodontists with all the orthodontists in the United States was on this three days ago, that a person infected can cough and it goes three feet to the ground and then it goes about five feet to the ground if you sneeze. But if you are, it says right on here, if you talk, spit, breathe, sneeze, or cough, even breathing, there's these micro particles that filter in the air like smoke cigarettes, or um, it just hangs in the air. It can hang in the air for two to three hours, and it actually can go 10 feet. So these people I keep seeing that are hanging around in groups, so they walk their dog and they're like three feet away from each other. Um, this thing is spreading, and I, I believe, and I've always believed this thing is more airborne, and this was convinced what I thought is this is the CDC's confirmed this, that it's if you get on an elevator and somebody was on there recently, 
Um, even an hour ago, it's in the air. And everyone needs to wear a mask, and we'll go into the mask thing a little bit at the end. Um, so my point is, is we got to take this a little bit more serious as airborne. I don't want you staying inside necessarily. You should go outside, but let's go jump to these steps. How do we get this out of your mouth? The first step is we want a hand brush or electric brush. If you have a battery brush, I don't believe in battery brushes. If you screw this and batteries drop out, you got the wrong brush. You need electric brush or hand brush, and you need to brush the teeth and the gums. So you need to go from one side all the way around to the other side. Um, then the teeth, you go one side all the way around to the other side. Don't be jumping around because you're going to miss. And then, of course, you got to go from one side to the other on the tongue side and then do the lower. So once you do that, you rinse with warm water and then you gargle with warm water. The next step is you want to take a tongue scraper. That's what one of these are. This one's very flexible. It won't break, but they have plastic cheaper ones that do break. And then you reach in and you scrape the back of your tongue as far as you can without gagging yourself forward, and you'll see this film come off. It takes a good seven scrapes, and then you put your tongue back in, which then the tongue's in here, where the coronavirus is in the throat, and then you keep bringing out your tongue four or five times and do that over and over till you get nothing off of it. And then, of course, you're running water on this to get it off. So now you've gotten everything out of your teeth and off of your tongue. The next thing you want to do is get a water pick. And if you don't have a water pick this big, you'll have to figure out how much you're going to do what I'm telling you. If you don't and you can't find one, you can use two cups of water, warm water, and then do what I'm telling you and rinse. But please do not gargle with this, what I'm getting ready to tell you, and do not swallow it. But you're not going to get sick and you're not going to die. But you want to fill this up with warm water, almost hot. The coronavirus doesn't like anything above 80 degrees and that's great. Um, what you want to do is then take a tablespoon, not a small teaspoon, there's a big tablespoon, and then what you want to do is take a half, the taste, this is Clorox bleach, don't get horrified by this, you're not going to die, um, and then what you do is you put that in the warm water. Do not put the warm water in last or it'll foam up and you won't be able to get everything into the water pit. Then you want to use a mouthwash, the ACT or scope, and put a whole tea tablespoon of that into the hot or the warm water, not hot water. And then you want a water pick. And then what you're going to do, you don't need to stir it up. And you may have to put the water pick on the medium setting first because your gums are going to bleed if you've never used one or it hurts. And then in about a week, you should be able to do it on high setting and then your gums will stop bleeding pretty much on the 14th day. So what you're going to do is you're going to water pick. You'll put the pick in right here, then here and here. You don't want to be back here giving the teeth a shower. They ain't going to do nothing. After you go from right to left, then you're going to do the right to left on the tongue side, and you have to feel it going between the teeth like you're flossing, and then you do the lower. You don't need to be doing any flossing for right now if you do this every day. And I'm recommending this to be done twice a day, and it's it, it works. Now, I want to give recognition to this step right here because Mark McCauley and Tom McCauley have research out. They have microscopes in their office. They're gum specialists called Peridonis here in Fort Lauderdale. And basically, they take a, a microscope. They take a, a Q-tip and wipe your gums. They put this under the microscope and look at it, and they show you your bacteria and all in your mouth. In three to four weeks, you come back after doing this, there's nothing in your mouth because it kills that and all the viruses. So that is unbelievable. That has not been known yet all in dentistry. Not that many people know about it, but we do. Um, but this is a perfect time for everybody to start doing this routine, not only to get your gum disease handled, but to kill the coronavirus all in your mouth. You, after you finish, you use warm water to rinse your mouth out. Then you use warm water again to gargle a couple of times. That's just to get the, gar the chlorine taste out, even though you use a little bit of mouthwash. So the next step you want to do um, we, um, is to use something. It's going to um, seem a little weird to you, but we've got to handle inside the nose. 
I do not believe in a teapot to do this and pour it in your nose. You want to use the Neomed sinus rinse, and it comes with a plastic bottle. You fill up the bottle with warm water. Border, don't do hot. It's going to burn. You're not going to like it. Your nose is sensitive. And then you put one of these little packets in here, and basically it's a special mix of salt. You can't use table salt. It's going to burn. If you just use warm water with this, or you pour it in with a teapot, it's gonna burn. It's gonna, I, I've done it. I, I ran out of these one time and I used this warm water in here and I could not tell you, I believe, I believe you tell you how hot it was, uh, how much it burned. The other thing to warn you is do not use this if you're getting ready to get on an air flight in three days because the water still lingers around on the inside of your ears, on the other side of your eardrum and the pressure will kill you. How do I know? I went to fly to Tampa one time and on the plane was going down, 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 cabin pressure, and I felt like somebody was putting a knife in my ear and I was crying and yelling and screaming like a little kid. It hurts. Do not do that either. So my point to all this, when you do this, you wanna stick the this up your nose like this and squeeze the bottle slowly and all of it's gonna rush out. You gotta be over a sink. Do not do it too fast. You don't wanna put pressure on your ears. Then you wanna lean your head over like this and then blow gently and let all that come out of this nose. Then over here, hold this nose, blow gently. Do not blow too hard because you're going to hurt your eardrums. Um, later on, don't be surprised if you bend over and tie your shoes and you're bending way over, like a lot of fluid could rush out. If you, um, in about 10 minutes, you should go like this, <clears throat> like that, and snort through your nose, and then you can swallow or spit it. If you swallow the coronavirus, it ain't going to do anything, but I recommend you to spit it out. And then after that, you, if you blow your nose, this will make your nose a little runny a little bit. Um, be sure you wash your face, like I've told you before, and wash your, um, wash your hands. So um, that leads me to the last thing is, is the last step. Uh, before we go into that, I want you to go back and when you wash your face, hands, wash your face all up in here, but all up around your eyebrows and on your eyelids and your eyelashes, you should just use a little bit of Burt's Bees. Um, you can get any baby shampoo. Most of you have baby shampoo in the house because you have children. Just put a little dab, a little dot here. Use a little warm water and get it sudsy and it feels good. I do this every morning all my life anyway before I put my contacts in. And I rinse my eyes out with saline solution so I don't put my contacts in on the scummy stuff in my eyes. But do not get this on the inside of your eyelids or your eyeballs because it's not going to feel good and it's not necessary. The last step I'm going to tell you is going to be a little controversial um, because, but I've seen some things. Why is I asked myself, I've been watching the spread of this over to the United States. Why isn't Russia getting this a lot? Well, Russia, um, one of the things I've always known, they believe in honey, and so do I. Um, I don't believe it as much as they do, but I tell you something the honey isn't anything to do with this, but you're going to see the honey brings something to the throat that you're going to take with the honey. Uh, the point is, is that you can actually take a tablespoon of raw honey. This is raw honey. It's dark brown. This is raw. Um, honey that's been filtered and doesn't have all the natural characteristics in it. You can get this at Target, by the way. Um, it's a light lighter. If you don't have anything but the light, good. Use that. But you want raw honey. You want to take a tablespoon, not a small teaspoon, and dip it down so you got this half of the spoon covered with honey pretty good. On this half, what you're going to do is squeeze a half a lemon or a half a lime, or you can get lemon juice. They also have this at Target. It's called Real Lemon. It's 100% real juice. And you, on the back part of the spoon, you fill it up with some lemon juice or you can squeeze a lemon or a lime, you put it in your mouth, use your lips, get it off, don't stir it up because, and when it gets in your mouth, it's gonna stir on its own. And then what you do is you, at about five seconds, you reach back and you gargle with it as long as you can and then swallow. And then you do this again. What does this do? This honey actually coats your throat and if you do this after, it's the last step in the morning after you've had your breakfast, then you do this and you're not going to drink or eat anything for a couple of hours. It coats your throat with the lemon juice, which has citric acid in it. And the citric acid kills the coronavirus. And the coronavirus that comes in there during this period ain't going to live, ain't going to make it, and it's not going to replicate or make, you know, 
other um, viruses from one virus. The next thing is you do it also at night. What I do is this whole routine. And the last thing I make sure I'm ready to go to sleep and put my head on the pillow. The last thing I do is the honey and the lemon and it coats my throat all night long so that virus doesn't have a chance to grow. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I wanted to keep this under 15 minutes, which I have. Um, the last thing to tell you on masks is, yes, we don't have masks, all of us, but you can actually take a paper towel. They have this on Google and Facebook, and you fold it a certain way, and then the edges of it, you then fold it over, and you staple a rubber band, and then you have an accordion-type thing the way you fold it, and now you got yourself a mask. The mask is not for you not to get the virus because the virus is in the air, as I told you. It's just sitting there two to three hours, and it gets in from around the mask until all of us can get an N95 or an N99 sports mask that's tight and has ventilator holes on it. Um, then you may, I recommend to do the paper towel thing. And then the paper towel thing is going to keep you from breathing your coronavirus out to everybody else, sneezing on people and coughing, particularly breathing. Breathing and people are at home and work near each other. We've got to stop spreading it. I'm not concerned about someone giving it to me. I don't want to give it to another. I think that's what we all are thinking. But please try this paper towel technique until we all get masks, just like they did in Korea, South Korea, and China, where they've decreased this problem, and we got ours continuing to get worse. So we got to stop the spread, but we got to keep this as three stages, which is um, keep it off our body, keep it off our hands, keep it out of the mouth. Stage two, we got to keep it out of the mouth, out of the nose, out of the throat, and heaven forbid, we're trying to keep the stage three. We don't want that to go to our lungs. Anyway, I hope this helped. And again, from Fort Lauderdale, this is Dr. Donald Fox, orthodontist. Much love and good luck and stay healthy.